go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, invited session uh, today uh, at Interpol 2020. Uh, the topic today is very interesting to me, at least, uh, multi-scale in situ fluid monitoring to understand and model multi-phase flow in porous media. My name is Debu Mishra. I am the chair of this session, and I am a professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Olga Vizika, uh, who will be speaking on this interesting topic, I am sure, to all of us. Uh, Dr. Vizika holds a diploma and a PhD in chemical engineering uh, from University of Petras. From 2013 to 2020, she was the director of geosciences at IFP Energies Noval. Since January 2020, she holds the position of scientific director with, within the same organization. Her research activity has focused on the experimental investigation and modeling of transport properties of multi-phase flows in porous media, including phenomena occurring during reactive flows with applications to the geologic storage of carbon dioxide. In her work, she is particularly interested in the effect of microstructure and heterogeneities on the mechanism of uh, fluid displacement at different scales and on the macroscopic flow properties of natural porous media. With that, I turn, uh, turn to uh, Dr. Vizika to begin her uh, talk today. And I will be back uh, once she's done for for question answer sessions. Thank you all for joining today. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Misra, for this introduction. Good morning or good afternoon to all of you, depending on where you are. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the program committee for the invitation to present in this 2020 Interpol meeting. Uh, it is a great honor for me, and I accept it with pleasure. Uh, I would like also to thank the organizers for their huge efforts to make this conference happen, even in the middle of this unprecedented sanitary crisis. Um, it's me that presents this work, but the results uh, have been obtained mostly uh, by the team of my co-workers and my acknowledgements go to them. Uh, especially to Swail Youssef, Mathieu Mascle, Jalila Bougelel, Daniela Bauer, Blasius Leontidis, and Guillaume Bateau, uh, who have been uh, in the initiative of various developments and innovations allowing to establish a better link between poor scale and core scale phenomena. Transport phenomena in porous media are encountered in many situations of practical and scientific interest where determination of transport properties remains a very challenging issue. This may concern natural porous media as for example, uh, soils, aquifers or hydrocarbon reservoirs, uh, but also artificial ones such as filters, fuel cells, catalysts uh, or even concrete. Today, we will focus on transport properties related to processes occurring in natural porous media. Multiphase flow in natural porous media is essential in a wide range of applications in geosciences, including soil remediation, water resources management, underground energy or CO2 storage, the exploitation of geothermal energy, and of course, hydrocarbon formation, migration, and production. Understanding and predicting fluid displacement mechanisms at the relevant scale is one of the big challenges in basin and reservoir modeling. Our objective is to um, be able to predict how any of these processes will proceed under, under our feet in order to maximize the performance of the process or to minimize the associated risks. The description of the transport of fluids in geological formations relies upon advances on the characterization and modeling of natural systems in a large spectrum of time and length scales. The complexity of transport properties in these systems is due first to the natural complexity and heterogeneity of the geological structures, multi-scale problem in space and time, 
but also to the multiphysics phenomena where fluid mechanics, rock mechanics, chemistry, physical chemistry, thermodynamics are all relevant and important to the flow. Last but not least, the underground is not directly accessible and observation of fluid and rock behavior in their natural state is not straightforward and this is just an aphemism. The historical expertise comes from the petroleum field and then uh, he went to the soil remediation area and finally to wider and greener applications which are more related to low carbon energies. The technical objective is to have predictive physical models to calculate multiphase transport properties as entry data for basing and reservoir modeling. It is commonly accepted now that the transport properties depend on the port network characteristics and the fluid distribution in the pore space. They depend more specifically on the geometrical and topological properties of the pore space and also on the fluid solid and fluid fluid interactions. The holy grail would be to know how the pore scale phenomena influence the macroscopic multiphase transport properties. Uh, and to do that, we need to be able to obtain information from the small scale, illustrated here, and to bring this information into the determination, the calculation of multiphase flow um, in porous media, then to validate this model on this data before to use them finally as predictive tools. In our approach, the investigation of pore scale phenomena and their impact on the macroscopic multiphase transport properties relies necessarily on the complementarity between experimental observations and modeling. We will see today 2D micromodel um, and microfluidic studies and 3D imaging of multiphase flow under static and dynamic conditions. And we will also talk about pore network modeling and lattice Boltzmann models. We need, however, to keep in mind uh, the important constraints. We were needing more and more uh, space resolution uh, to be able to treat fine pores of the real porous media to resolve the finest structure characteristics and also to capture the details of the interfaces moving within these pores. We also need to uh, uh, high uh, time resolution in order to be able to uh, follow the dynamics of the fluid interfaces within the pores. Um, but also we need to deal with the heterogeneity of the natural porous media. Um, implying high representative elementary volumes. We will see that there is a compromise between resolution and the investigated volume, and that we have at every time for every observed phenomenon to do the right choice of sample size and the adequate resolution. 2D micromodels, and we see an illustration in this slide, are convenient to study qualitatively the transport mechanisms and to apprehend the effects of various parameters on pore scale or macroscopic scale phenomena. We illustrate here, unfortunately the move it does not work, it was too heavy. We illustrate here the impact of the interfacial tension, high interfacial tension, low interfacial tension, and the effect of on the front advancement and the saturation distribution. These experiments provide valuable results to develop and validate modeling approaches as we're going to see a little bit later. Of course, these are 2D experiments and 2D experiments are far from the 3D reality of the natural porous media. With the X-ray based imaging techniques, we can have a very good representation of the real porous medium at different resolutions depending on the employed method. We see in this slide a comparison between um, of the performances of the specifications uh, of medical CT scanner, industrial CT scanner, lab, micro CT, and synchrotron. It is important to notice that the higher the space or time resolution, the smaller the investigated volume. Thus, for the synchrotron, for example, when, uh, where we observe moving interfaces 
uh, in one micron pores, uh, for example, uh, the sample is limited to two millimeters diameter, which makes the volume probably uh, much smaller than the representative elementary volume of most of the natural rocks. In this slide, we see typical cells used in uh, in situ experiments involving 3D image acquisition. These cells consist of an X-ray transparent core holder and they allow in situ monitoring of the flow rate, injection of up to five fluids, various pressure and temperature conditions, and in some cases also they um, permit to apply different stresses, triaxial cells, for example, to study the effect of mechanical deformation. What we see in the present slide is a CT scan imaging and monitoring of a surfactant flooding in a macro plug, a big plug of four centimeter diameter. The big size of the plug allows gravity segregation to occur as we can see in the movie. Thus, we can evaluate the relative effect of capillary versus the gravity forces. However, the space resolution in this measurement is very low. It is impossible to visualize the individual pores and to distinguish the fluid-fluid interfaces inside these pores. If we want to do, to do that, we have to go to a lab micro CT. In this case, the 3D pore scale distribution was obtained in a lab micro CT in a mini plug, five millimeter diameter with a five micron resolution. What we observe here is the final non-wetting fluid saturation after the sweeping of the pore space by the wetting fluid. We can see that the no wetting phase is distributed rather uniformly in the form of ganglia, each occupying from one to several 10 to 20 pores. We can also compare final states in this type of experiments. For example, here we see the effect of the interfacial tension on the quantity of dis and distribution of the non wetting phase. However, we know nothing for the moment about the dynamics of the displacement in this type of experiment. To see the ganglia and to see the ganglia getting mobilized, we need to go to another equipment, the Tomcat beam line at SLS with the rate of uh, one 3D image every three seconds allow us to, um, for the same space resolution, uh, five micro as previously to get the dynamics of the interface movements. Two phase displacement has been performed in this facility, the Tomcat beam line at SLS, with three acquisition cycles drainage with N decaying, imbibition with brine, and then the surfactant injection at different flow rates. What you see here is how the surfactant progresses within the pore space and how the surfactant sweeps completely uh, the pore space. We see the interfaces moving uh, and we have qualitative and quantitative information extremely important for modeling issues. Some of the quantitative quantitative information is given in this graph. The mean non waiting phase saturation, the mean cluster size, as well as the size of the largest cluster decrease at each injection stage, corresponding to an increase in the capillary number. The movie in the right hand side shows you at the very poor scale, the evolution of this ganglia, the movement of the interfaces until the hole disappears during the injection of the surfactant solution. Many years after the first observation, the first acquisition, I still find these images really amazing. However, I have to consider the evidence, 
the investigated volume is not more than a couple of cubic millimeters, well below the representative elementary volume, making this technique inadequate to observe phenomena with larger characteristic dimensions. If we want to do that, we have to move to another equipment. With uh, our real-time X-ray radiography facility, a skillful combination of last generation X-ray radiography, miniaturization, automation, and data processing, we have been able to observe transient displacement of two fluids in a rock sample, we see here, involving front creation and movement and saturation evolution, saturation profile evolution. A big advantage of that is the possibility to measure at the same time different operational parameters and to determine finally macroscopic properties such as porosity, permeability, or even relative permeabilities on the same samples. The same real-time X-ray radiography facility has been also used to study reactive flows of extreme importance for the transport properties since the structure of the rock itself have evolves with time, changes with time. Acid solution of PH2 has been injected in a calcite cemented sandstone and this is the pattern as we've seen that we obtain uh, after, uh, the, um, the, after the displacement, after the flow. And it can also, uh, it is also related to the evolution of porosity and permeability, allowing to establish also a physical law between the porosity and permeability between these two properties in the altered uh, pore space rock. As a final experimental example, I will show you images of dry gas uh, injection in brine saturated sample. This is the brine uh, saturated sample and dry gas is injected from the top and the capillary contact with brine is assured in the bottom of the porous medium. The observed phenomenon is particularly complex. The dry gas injection provokes evaporation of the brine of the water, leading to salt deposit in the pore space and consequent um, lowering of the rock permeability. The result is the decrease of the injected gas flow rate during which re-imbibition of the brine occurs, leading to dissolution of the salt, movement of the salt deposition front upwards in the structure, a new decrease in the permeability, leading again decrease of gas flow rate and the beginning of the new cycle. These are the images from the uh, X-ray uh, measurement. And these are the cycles with time of the gas flow rate imposed uh, during the experiment. The different studies illustrated in the previous slides provide experimental data at various scales. These measurements can serve as a basis to propose models based on the physics of the multiphase flow uh, displacement in pore structure. The PNM model and the lattice Boltzmann methods highlighted here consist of what we call the digital rock approach. They can both integrate pore scale information and they can be used to calculate transport properties from the millimetric to roughly decametric scale. The pore network modeling first, the pore scale investigation and description permits through a dedicated process involving 3D reconstruction of the pore space, pore labeling and uh, segmentation to construct a pore network representative of the rare rock. In pore network modeling, the pore structure is represented by a 3D interconnected network of pores and throats, kind of idealized um, version of the pore space. It can be used to calculate, determine, transport, capillary, and electrical properties, as we can see some examples in the right-hand 
uh, side of the slide. Um, of course, the space resolution is always an issue. Important deviations can be observed, cases here, um, between experimental and modeling results. And when this happens, it is an indication that the effect of the unresolved pore sizes is important. There is only one more minute, please. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, it will take three. Lattice Boltzmann modeling, on the other hand, allows to calculate fluid transport in the real pore space geometry and topology as extracted from the micro CT, for example. The dispersion of a passive tracer in the porous medium, 100% saturated with water, has been calculated and presented in this slide. The Lattice Boltzmann simulation demonstrated the Gaussian distribution of the displacement of homogeneous porous media. A little bit further, same type of experiment, same type, same type of simulation, we have to study the dispersion of partially saturated, uh, impartially saturated porous media. And this is uh, the, what the, the lattice Boltzmann gives as a result observation of an increase of the probability of high velocity occurrence and it is uh, a very good agreement at least qualitative of uh, with what it is observed in micro model scale in micro models as a function of the different uh, gas saturations and the different uh, high velocity pathways and isolated zones observed within the micro model Uh, the simulation tools presented here, Port Network Models and Lattice Boltzmann Methods, have both uh, many advantages but also limitations. In the advantages, we can count the multiple numerical experiments on exactly the same sample, time and cost effectiveness, the possibility to access to properties when uh, experiment is not feasible, and also the possibility to test easily different processes and scenarios. However, the limitations are important. The physics need to be understood. And also uh, these methods need, need high computational capacity, which again um, demonstrates that uh, the resolution versus the representative elementary volume is a real issue. And to conclude, uh, in situ imaging techniques bring key information to understand multiphase flow in porous media with a continuous improvement of space and time resolution. But this is not enough. The modeling has also, it is also absolutely necessary, and the models have to be validated on experimentally acquired data and to be more and more predictive. The different examples showed the necessity of adapting space and time scale to the studied phenomenon. They also indicated the complementarity of different methods to investigate multiphase flow in porous media. The models from their side need to make the link between the different scales going from the pore scale to the relevant continuum scale. And finally, as a perspective, it is important to identify the relevant descriptor for the different transport properties, and maybe the machine learning techniques is uh, an adapted uh, solution to this end. And I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Alga Vizika. I mean, this was an interesting presentation. Uh, now it is. Uh, time for question uh, from the audience. And uh, I am mo monitoring the HOVA uh, um, app. Uh, there is, there are, there is uh, sessions Q&A or the chat function that, uh, that you can use to ask uh, questions on this presentation. Am I supposed to see the questions? I don't believe you can see it, but I can see it. <laughs> I don't see any questions yet. Probably people are. I don't see any questions either. Yeah. Um, Olga, you cannot see because in Zoom you cannot see the questions in Hoover. But everybody who has a question, please use the chat function in 
Hoover to ask yeah. questions. Right. Maybe the moderator has one question or two. I might. I'm just waiting for them to uh, do. But one thing, one thing I, yes, I could ask that question now. Uh, one thing that uh, I was a little bit, it was slide 15, I believe, is that you have developed a, a porosity a permeability relationship. And uh, what, what kind of, I didn't follow there is you have used the same porous media. Uh, how did the porosity change? The porosity the change is due to the uh, reactive flow. The uh, calcite uh, is dissolved during the acid solution. Okay, so okay. what we see in the image here is exactly uh, the uh, new distribution of the porosities and the evolution of the porosities during the injection. And as the porosity changes, also the permeability changes. Of course, yes, yes. But this is also in, at a scale that is smaller than the continuum, uh, smaller than the representative element. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. The, the global scale for the phenomenon of dissolution is, uh, uh, is the, the size is smaller than the, the global phenomenon. But locally, we can correlate porosity and permeability uh, the local porosities and permeabilities, and then we can uh, obtain this comparison, this uh, uh, right, law right. between porosity and permeability. Right, okay. Thank you. Uh, and uh, there is one question uh, from the audience. What mm -hmm. are considerations for moving across length scales successfully? Across length, length scales? Uh, yes. Successfully, yes. Um, well, uh, I, I guess that uh, I, I will have to, um, to will have to uh, be able to we have to know uh, the representative elementary volume once again, uh, and this representative elementary volume is different from uh, depending on the heterogeneity of the sample, depending on the um, uh, scale of heterogeneity of the sample, but also the representative elementary volume changes with the process that we, uh, we observe. For example, when we have uh, fronts, uh, it is not uh, feasible to attain the representative elementary volume. The movement of fronts, it is not uh, uh, by, by definition, uh, we cannot have the representative elementary volume. So I guess that what is important is to uh, be um, uh, to 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 have that in mind that the representative elementary volume will depend on the heterogeneity of the porous medium, but also on the process we are looking at. Thank you. And uh, there is another question, uh, and we have just two more minutes. So there, there are four more questions, but I'll try to see how. How do you see the machine learning approaches can be used in combination to the process-based models you described in detail? Okay, um, the, uh, the fact with, uh, well, I said that this is a perspective, so uh, I don't have uh, real results, but the fact is that in, uh, in the post media uh, area, uh, there are, uh, you, you will never be able to run all the experiments. You will never be able to run all the experiments in all the different scales. You will never be able uh, uh, to either to, to run all the simulations in these different possible uh, uh, porous media. So the idea is to uh, run a big number of uh, simulations or, well, a more limited, number of experiments and then to see whether, for example, uh, descriptors from the uh, very small pore scale appear and when, where, whether the machine learning on the results can lead us towards those descriptors that we have not seen up to now. So uh, this is uh, the, the way that uh, uh, from the uh, process-based models we can run the numerical simulations, we can obtain the different results and then look whether with the machine learning, for example, whether there are descriptors that are um, underlined, that are hidden be be below what we consider as the parameters for our different modeling. 
Well, thank you. And unfortunately, there is there are one two more questions, but we don't have the time right now. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, people can co communicate with you via email uh, or talk to you later. So, thank you very much for this thank wonderful you very much. presentation. You're yes. Very welcome. Yes, thank you. and. And also the chat function is available in Hoover, sorry to interrupt, and there is a possibility to have virtual meetup rooms. So in case uh, some of the people who had questions to Olga, please, you can contact her and she may be able to answer your question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank you.